You are listening to the ADHD Support Talk Radio podcast. ADHD Support Talk Radio is sponsored by addclasses.com. Sign up now for a free webinar by going to www.addclasses.com. Well, welcome back to ADHD Support Talk Radio. I'm your co-host, Lynn Idris, and for more than a decade, I've helped smart, capable professionals just like you whose lives and careers are not advancing at the level of their ability because of their struggles with things like focus, organization, procrastination, uh, weak follow-through, and time management. I help people from all over the world create real-life, sustainable ways to keep their to-do lists under control, accomplish what they intend each day, and perform at the level of their abilities. You can find out more about me at www.coachingaddvantages.com. And if you text the keyword HACK, H-A-C-K, to 444-999, I'll send you seven foolproof productivity hacks. Today I have back with me attention coach Jeff Copper. Jeff was here in a previous episode talking about working memory, and today we're going to go a little deeper into working memory. Jeff is an attention coach, an expert on attention and attention deficit disorder, or ADHD, and is founder of DIG Coaching Practice. Jeff coaches individuals and entrepreneurs with ADHD symptoms who are seeking to improve both their personal and their professional results. So Jeff helps others overcome information overload, chronic disorganization, ADHD and ADD symptoms, time management challenges, impulsivity, and other conditions that can hinder their advancement. So tell us a little bit more about where we're going today. We're going to go a little deeper into working memory, and, and what do you have to share today, Jeff? Well, again, first, but Lynn, I want to t- thank you again for having me on the program and, and for a sequel, if you will, and a follow-up. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful to that, um, and I'm just uh, I'm honored to come on to, uh, to talk today. Um, in our last get-together, we did a little bit of a working memory exercise to help people really kind of witness it as a process. And today, what I want to do is I want to start out, there's a, literally an attention exercise I'd like to put everybody into, but it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to walk you through it, my day, and, and kind of simulate it. And then I want to talk about that experience and kind of relate it to working memory. Uh, particularly, this is related a lot to projects and a lot to transitions, which is historically a very difficult area for people with ADHD. Would you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so um, I am a coach. I work out of my house. When I wake up in the morning, I, I, I go downstairs, and the first thing that I do is I push the power button on my computer for it to begin to boot up. And it takes about 20 to 30 seconds for it to come up, and I have to put my password in. And then I go off and I go make a cup of coffee because I can't do anything without my coffee. And um, because I have an old laptop, it's about 10 years old, and I use Skype and everything, it takes about four minutes for it to boot up. So it's, it's ready for me to go and totally functional. So imagine I wake up and when I push the button, 30 seconds, I put my password in, I go off, I get my cup of coffee, I come back and I sit down and I do some work. And so metaphorically, I'm, I'm going to sit down and I say, I'm going to say Lynn, I'm going to send Lynn a, a letter today and I begin to think about what I want to talk to Lynn about. And so I get it down and I start typing it out. I get like a, a line or two into it. Imagine, Lynn, um, that all of a sudden your the electricity goes out. Now, I live in Tampa. Um, in South Tampa, and if anybody knows it's a Sunday, and for no reason your power just goes off. But literally when that happens, I, uh, I lose everything. And so I have to push the power button again and wait 30 seconds and put in my password, and then i got to wait another four minutes for my computer to, to boot up. And often I, you know, I go screw around and do a couple other things, and I come back. And if I'm lucky, I open up Microsoft Word, and it's got auto recovery, and it pulls up the sentences that I had written to you. And at that point in time, I've got to reread what I wrote to say, okay, this is where I am, and try to recreate the thoughts that were in my mind about what I was going to write next, and then I begin to write again. And if you can imagine the unfortunate happenings, if you will, that the power goes off again and my computer goes blank again, you can imagine how frustrated I am right now. So I push the power button on my computer, and I wait for 30 seconds, and I put in the password, and then I go off to go do some other things and, you know, get distracted. And for all I know, I come back about 10 minutes later, and I open up Microsoft Word, and sure enough, it's, it's auto recovery has captured what's there, and I reread what I was writing to you, and I begin to think about where I am and what I was going to say. Now, I describe this because there's a lot of things that, that are really helpful for us. Realize that 20 minutes have passed since I originally started this, and I've only got a couple sentences written for you. And I think that if we begin to look at a computer, you have its hard drive, 
which is where everything is saved, that when you turn the computer on, the electricity unpacks what's in the hard drive and loads everything into what's called random access memory, which is, requires electricity in order for it to be held. And it takes a while for all that stuff to come out to boot up. So you have all the tools that you need. Your working memory is kind of like that. When you sit down for a project like maybe your taxes, you begin to think, okay, where are the forms? What do I have? What do I got to do? And there's a certain amount of loading into your brain, the tools and the mindset and the idea of really kind of where you are before you can really kind of get to your taxes. And like random access memory, your working memory is the same. If you get distracted and you've got to run off and go do something, it's like your computer got unplugged when you come back. It, it, like it evaporates, and you have to come back and kind of retrace your steps and almost start over. And so I like to use uh, the computer as a metaphor because when you are loading everything into your mind, it is like booting up your computer figuratively. But when you're, you're sitting down with a project and you begin to sit into it and get your mind into it, you have to begin to load the thoughts and ideas that are kind of going on, which is the same thing as kind of booting up to get your head kind of ready to go do a project or anything else. And so that loading in process is somewhat effortful. That's, that's an interesting metaphor to use for your memory, and it's a good comparison because I think most of us can bring back to, you know, to our memory, no pun intended, times when our working memory has been interrupted, plenty of them, like in the last hour yep. probably, of times when yep. we've had to sort of reboot our memory and start from scratch. It, it really, really is, and it's funny because when I'm working with people with ADHD, procrastination is a big area of concern. And one of the things that I talk about is if you've got a big project that you've got to do and you're not real sure exactly what you've got to do or how long it's going to take, it's really sometimes an efficient reason or good reason to not start a project, to actually procrastinate on it, because if you don't know how long the project's going to take, Lynn, and you get started into it, and all of a sudden you get called off the project where you've got to go do something and you walk back. It's like you've got to reboot your working memory again, and, but you've got to start all over. And if you were to get distracted on something that you're working on two or three times, just like as I described in the morning, 20 minutes have passed and I've only got three or four sentences to account for it. And at some point in time you go, wait, this is really an inefficient use of my time. So you begin to put those projects off or those things off hoping to find time where it's uninterrupted that you can sit down and focus in on it, but all too often that doesn't happen. And so in one sense, working memory is a big factor in these things, but at the same time I can say sometimes procrastination, you're doing it because it's actually efficient. You actually mm -hmm. can get something else done and accomplished as opposed to keep starting over and over and over. So it, I actually call that purposeful procrastination. And again, it's always interesting to me to hear other coaches and how we frame things differently, but sometimes you've got to carve out the right amount of time or, or an estimated you know, right amount of time, a good guess to how much time you're going to need to really dig into something because transitions are hard for us. When we have to go back and forth between subjects or re-enter or you know, kind of restart something over and over and over again, that's pretty painful to most of us with yep. ADHD. I think most of us can relate to that. It, it is painful, and this can relate to it, but here's what's cool is I like where you are is because if we begin to understand working memory in this context, all of a sudden there's a lot of stuff that is out there that really makes a lot of sense. Um, for example, like it's, sometimes it's, it's purposeful procrastination because really it's not a good thing to do right now. So one of the things that I, when I'm coaching people is when they can begin to understand this concept, and I just call it rebooting, is that if you do have something that you need to do and a project and you don't know how long it's going to take or you're in a situation where you know that's not going to happen, the concept that I talk about is let's determine how we can hibernate our computer and not have to reboot it from the beginning. And the idea there is how can you push that button where it only takes a couple seconds for you to get back to where you were when you last left the project. And that concept is it's a, it's a concept you begin to think of and it works differently for everybody, but just to to share with everybody one of my experience, because this is a definite strategy that I use, is when I'm working with people, I coach 20, 30 people a week, and each individual person's got their own individual story. And when I'm on the line with them, I'm dealing with them, and when we get done with a call, I've got my notes, um, which are kind of cryptic. They're hard to read. But in a week from now, it's like a project that I've got to remember uh, what's going on for the next call, and I've got to be with it when, it's, when it happens. And rather than sit there and and laboriously try to recreate it. When I get done with every call, 
the first thing I do is I hit speed dial on my phone and I call a thing called copytalk.com, which is a voice dictation program. And I like it better than Dragon, naturally speaking, because a human transcribes it on the other line. And I began to dictate a stream of consciousness based off of my notes, not what we're supposed to do, but what I was thinking at the end of the call. And I just transcribed an email to me, and I put it in the folder of the person that I'm coaching, and I skim it. And I pick up a whole bunch of buzzwords, and skimming my stream of consciousness, again, not what I was supposed to, but my thoughts at the end of the call, brings back um, about 85% of what happened on the last call, and literally takes me a minute to get into the call when I'm talking to And sometimes I'll just talk out loud about what happened last time with the other person to have them boot up their memory. And so I don't have to start over again. I can get present almost immediately by just kind of skimming my thoughts that I left off in my last call. Does that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense. And I do something similar with my clients, in, but I, I do it in handwriting because that works for me. And that's one of the things that we talked about last time is finding what works for you is going to be as individual as your thumbprint. I think that's, Absolutely. that's brilliant. I had never heard of copytalk.com until you brought that up last time. I'm sure that's a tool that a lot of our, our listeners can, will find helpful. Yeah, as an aside, um, what's cool about it is you can dictate for up to four minutes unlimited number of time. Now, the pricing change, I've had it for 10 years. It's $59 a month. Let me tell you, I get my money's worth out of it. But it's really pretty cool because you can do it while you're driving, and I just hit speed dial. And again, somebody transcribes it so intuitively. Like if I say the number two, they can determine if it's T-O-O, you know, bullet sign or whatever. But anyway, it's, uh, I find it real fascinating. So to move on, this concept of hibernating your computer as opposed to moving I guess to explain why those with ADHD might set, lay out a project at the dining room table or in a conference room or whatever, and they spread it all out, and they have a tendency to leave that there. And as I say, when a person's in the middle of a project and they get up and they go and they come back, there's a visualness to the, how things are laid out that helps them get back to where they were um, when they last left that project. Imagine if it was all put away then they don't have those visual reminders and it's more difficult for them to get their head into the game to remember what's going on. So a lot of people complain with ADD Crowd on projects that it's all spread out, but I actually believe it's a compensatory strategy that helps them not have to reboot their computer from scratch because there's visual reminders of where they are, which helps them being more present in a moment, which is kind of funny because the very thing that people would say is you need to put these projects away would actually inhibit a person's ability with ADHD actually to get back into a project. Is this something that you've seen yourself or, or you can relate to? Absolutely, absolutely. And some of it, again, depends on how you, know, how you process what your tendencies are. But that's, it's, ve it's very true. Many of us are pile makers, and we do that for a reason. The pile is a visual cue. If you use it properly, if you use it well, it can provide a visual cue. And you need some way to, I call it, like to, to leave a bookmark for yourself. So knowing where yep. you were, where your head was, what your thoughts were when you stepped away, if you have the option to, to spread it out and leave it there, <laughs> that can be helpful. It can also create other problems, but you know, it, it's a strategy. And if it's used intentionally, it can be a great strategy. Absolutely. So let's expand this a little bit because we've talked about projects and stuff like this because this is really, I'm talking about this rebooting concept for projects, but it's really with regard to transitions and everything. And so imagine it's a Friday afternoon, and you're at work, and it's funny because I've talked to a lot of people, they, they, they go away on the weekend, maybe for a three-day weekend, or even just they have big plans on the weekend, and Monday morning they wake up and they show up at the office, and first of all, they don't even know that they have a career and where the building's located, but when they find <laughs> that, they walk into their office and they're just stuck because they have to, they've completely forgotten everything, and it spends, they have to spend a little bit of time going through their emails just to remember what's kind of going on, and in those moments, I worked with a lot of people like, you know, how do you document in some type of way where you were and what was going on, whether you were laying projects out on your desk um, in categories and maybe making some notes on where they are? Because, again, when you come back on Monday morning, if you've got some type of instruction or it's pre-organized when you show up, it's a lot quicker to get your head into the game to kind of get going than it is to walk back and actually have to recall where you are before you actually organize it. 
Um, I often talk to people with ADD uh, when they're on like maybe a three-day weekend or a vacation that sometimes they want to actually, like if they're going to be back on Monday, they say actually return on Tuesday to give them that Monday, that time to kind of reboot their mind before the heavy stuff starts to to happen. If they tell everybody they're not in their office, they can still do some work. They might not want to send outgoing emails. Just put them in your draft and send them the next day. But it gives you a chance to kind of get present to what's going on as opposed to showing up with that overwhelming feeling of a full inbox, everybody calling you and not really kind of knowing what's going on. Again, it's that notion of how do you document what's going on so you can hibernate your computer as, a whole, as opposed to rebooting it from scratch. Absolutely. Same thing with a business person going from meeting to meeting to meeting is trying to document where you were before you leave a meeting, like these are the deliverables that we have and get agreement before you go into the next meeting because in the absence of that, what you'll find is a lot of times you'll be trying to wrap up what you were thinking about in the prior meeting, wake up about halfway through the second meeting, realize that you hadn't paid attention, scrambling to get caught up, and by the time you get to the third meeting, you're still ruminating on the first and second that you're not even present. But if you can begin to document and close that stuff out so that you can kind of boot down one computer from that meeting and then walk into the next one and boot it up, this concept or construct of really thinking about it like that can really help you discover strategies that really work for you so that you can manage this booting up process as opposed to just letting it kind of like hit you in the face and get you down. So again, it's that understanding what's going on, what's behind it, allows you to put some, you know, some tools, some systems, some processes in yep. place, some ways of doing things to help you compensate for this challenge. Transitions are always going to be hard for us with ADHD, whether it's you know, subject to subject, project to project, vacation to work. You've got to yep. understand that and plan for it and it will make it impact you far less severely. Absolutely. And working memory is very much a challenge with, with, ADD, with ADD. The last one we really touched, we talked about, we used an attention exercise to talk about the juggling and the organizing of thoughts in the minute. Uh, we're talking about this thing too only on a project type basis that's a little bit longer and that notion that we don't want to uh, walk away and have to kind of keep starting over. And again, this just really understanding what's going on in the background can help you identify what strategies you can try, and sometimes why a strategy won't work for you that everybody else thinks it should. So Absolutely. anyway, just a, a lot of real fun stuff. Absolutely. Very cool. Very cool. Transitions are hard, and knowing that, expecting that, you can, make, you can set a plan for yourself, you can set some intentions, you can put some tools in place, some processes and ways of doing things just to make your life more effective or you know, a lot easier and to make you more effective in your life for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. The one thing I will tell you is everybody's got their own. What works for everybody is different from everybody else. I've actually had some people where they're coming back in the rebooting process. The best thing for them to do is talk out loud to other people. I mean, I know when a coaching call, somebody will call in, I'll say, any did you follow up on your homework? And they're like, I said, just, just ramble for me for a while. And sometimes that talking process will bring it back to them really, really quickly. Other times, um, I've actually had some people where there's a, a step-by-step process where I ask them questions and it, it enables them to kind of remember what's going on. Again, what works for each individual really depends. But the one thing that I know, Lynn, is that if you ever find yourself uh, working on a project where you get into it relatively quickly, if you go back and, and observe the characteristics in the environment that took place beforehand, usually there's a lot of clues of what will help accelerate you getting into that mindset in order to happen. So as I say, all the, all the clues to your successful structures are in the successful times that you transition into something, not necessarily the times that you didn't. And it goes back to that self-awareness, right? Absolutely, which is a verb, everybody. It's not a noun. Self-awareness is an ongoing thing. It's not that you were just self-aware once. It's an ongoing thing that you're monitoring yourself with. And it's funny, that term is, I think, loosely used out there. And it's, I always like, it's a verb. It's an ongoing type thing. It's just not static. It is, because you, you change, right, minute to minute. Yep. You're, what, what works for you evolves. What your responsibilities are evolves. I mean, you evolve over time as well. So self-awareness needs to be active. It needs to be intentional. And it needs to be an important part of of, of what you're doing every day, what's working, what's not working. The name of my business, Coaching ADD Vantages, is that I believe that all of these things that we struggle with, 
really do have upsides, and I believe that you can focus on and understand better the things that do work for you, the things that are strengths, the things that come naturally, and you can use them to your advantage to make the things that you're, you, know, you struggle with historically less impactful. And that's absolutely essential is that, that you know, ongoing self-awareness piece. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I can't help it, but I just released a video on YouTube the other day that talks about working memory and the advantages of like evaporating. That is, is if you get in a fight with your significant other, your working memory, sometimes you get distracted, and you can't even remember what the fight is about. So there's no grudges. It's very forgiving. And I was, I was really kind of playing on the video because it is really an advantage in some of those situations. And somebody made a comment like, oh, yeah, my, my, my relationship, you know, it doesn't really matter what happens, but we reset when it's over because I can't remember what's going on. And the person actually acknowledged how their partner, but they think that's really cool because they don't carry with them for forever. So there's always another side of all this stuff, Lynn, that's really a positive. So forgive me for throwing that in, but I just thought it was kind of no, a fun it's, little it's thing that's that. related to I've been married to. for 30 years, Jeff, so I know, I know exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. And I think my husband benefits sometimes because I do forget you know, I remember yep. in, in previous years, he'd come home and I'd think, I'm mad at you for some reason, but I don't remember why. <laughs> so it doesn't last very long. And that's, you know, I, I had a conversation with a client, I think it was last week, talking about that, like, like you know, the, and just sort of an aside, the importance of actually resolving some of the things can be a problem sometimes with ADHD when you forget. So, I, you yep. know, I do remember times where I had to, put a reminder on my calendar or a note to myself to make sure we finish the conversation about, you know, whatever, so we can actually resolve it rather than just me forgetting all about it until it happens again. But it's, that's, that's funny. It definitely has its, up, it definitely has its yeah. upside. <laughs> yeah, you, sometimes you have to stop and laugh. So anyway. Yes, and if you don't, you'll drive yourself crazy, right? <laughs> Absolutely. 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 So any final thoughts, anything you'd like to add? I think you've given us some great information again. It's always so much fun to have you. Well, the, the one thing that I'll say is that over my years, um, I'm a big fan of Dr. Russell Barkley, and he, he frames ADHD out as really a self-regulation issue, not so much a deficit of attention. And that's the inability to engage your attention in things that doesn't catch your interest and then the inability to disengage your attention on things that you're interested in. And as I've studied it, it's totally a self-regulation issue with a working memory challenge. And almost anything that I've heard recently with regard to ADHD boils down to these two things. And I really hope, Lynn, in the last interview that we've done in this one that we've illuminated and, and have people really understand what working memory is, how it manifests, and how it relates so much to the ADHD experience and how you just have to be clever at what you're doing and witness it, and that awareness will actually help you begin to manage it. And you can read the books to get an idea, but at the end of the day, watch what works for you. Don't get hung up on you have to do it a certain way. And so um, it's not an easy thing to resolve or whatever. If it was, people wouldn't be listening to this podcast. But there is hope, and there is definitely ways to do it. So I hope that uh, I hope this has been a good experience and, and people have the insight now to understand kind of really what's at play. Really good stuff, Jeff. I appreciate it a lot. So give us your contact information again and, and let people know how they can find you. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Copper. It's just like the metal. Um, you can find me at digcoaching.com. As you, if you listen to me, I'm really all about insights and understanding kind of what's going on as we excavate uh, ahas daily. And uh, that's really kind of my style. And if you're interested in learning more, come check us out at digcoaching.com. Awesome. Thanks so much. And find us on iTunes. If you're getting inf good information, you're enjoying what you're learning from this podcast, please leave us a five-star review so other people can find us too. Again, I'm co-host Lynn Idris, and you're listening to ADHD Support Talk Radio. Thanks for your attention.